Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. I want to talk to you today about the different join operations inside of execution plans in SQL Server. The join operations are easy enough to understand, but what happens is, is people get really excited about, you know, this join is bad or this join is good and and they want to make you know they want to say that you know if we have join x whatever join x is we have problems and it's just not true each of the join types supports different types of functionality supports different types of indexing supports different types of behavior and you want to pick and choose based on the behaviors not based on the join types there's nothing good bad or evil about the join types. Let's go through the four different join types we have. First up, and, and this is in no particular order by the way, the first one is nested loops. Now nested loops is easy to understand. For each row in the first or top data set, perform one search against the other data set for matching values. And it does that as each row comes in. Row comes in, do the search, a row comes in, do the search, a row comes in, do the search, and find the matching values for each one. Easy enough to understand. By the way, if that sounds a little bit like a cursor, it is. Hash match. Hash match uses the rows in the first or top set to create a hash table then the hash table is used to probe against the rows in the second set, in the bottom set, to find any matching rows and then it outputs those. Now it's what's called a blocking operator because it will wait until it gets all of the hash values, creates the hash table, and then starts doing the probe and put out the stuff. Then we have the merge join. The merge join is very easy. It reads data from both inputs simultaneously and merges the two endpoints joining each row value that matches. It does require that the data be ordered. Finally, we have the new join type. It's available in 2017 and on Azure and currently only works with Column Store, but it will be, you know, Microsoft saying that they're going to change that. And what it is is the adaptive join type. Now, the adaptive join type basically looks at your statistics on your data and says, "Well, okay, for this type of query, for these type of statistics, here's a row target. If I go below that row target, I should use a nested loops join. If I go above that row target, I should use a hash join. And then it adjusts on the fly in an adaptive fashion. You know, nothing you do, nothing you have to do to your code or anything else. It determines should it do loops or hashes based on that row target value that it set. It's really neat. Um, I believe there's another video I already have on the adaptive join, and, and I'll, I'll put a link to that down in, and in the information below. Now, the question that always comes up is, which of these join types do I use? And the shortest possible answer is all of them. Um, the joins are there for a reason. Each join type is efficient in a different way, and we want to make sure that we're using them you know, all the time. Don't try to force one over the other. Um, we had a situation once where um, a, a Microsoft consultant, smart, smart man, amazing guy. I learned so much from him. He was great. But uh, he came in and he put in a hint that forced a loops join for one query. And, and it was this very complex query. And, and we needed in one spot, we needed to, to control exactly what happened. The, unfortunately, the development team learned that loops joins are faster, and they put loops join hints on everything. Wow. Um, and yes, that caused all kinds of problems. So, which join should you be using? Well, it really depends. Let's just run through them again real quick, same order, and talk about where they, how they work better. Now, the nested loops join is best for smaller data sets especially on the top input, you know, a, a few rows. Now, defining a few does kind of depend on your data set, but you got to think that for each one of those, it's going to execute the other thing. And so you don't want this to be executed hundreds of millions of times down to here, one at a time. Um, that's going to be very inefficient. So instead, you want that for smaller data sets. So for small data sets, the nested loops works well. Hash. 
Hash match is all about covering up our sins. If we're doing large, large volumes of data, hash match is very efficient. If we don't have indexing, hash match becomes very efficient. If we've done some other weird stuff on our joins and whatnot, hash match is very efficient. It basically covers up a lot of bad choices. Um, yes, preferably we should be sm joining on small data sets. We should be filtering our data in order to return small data sets, but we can't always. And so we've got the hash match join to help us with bigger data sets or places where the structure of the code just isn't quite supporting us. The hash match arrives at a way to achieve efficient joins, but we do have to remember that it is a blocking operator and it can cause problems because of that. And it's creating this hash table. Now, where would the hash table live? Hey, TempDB. So hash tables can also put additional load on TempDB. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, but remember, they are not bad. They are good. They're efficient. It's just they're efficient at certain things. They're either covering up for us or they're dealing with large data sets. Now the merge join, the merge joins magic. They're extremely efficient, but they require ordered data. So now if you've got a query that's got good indexes in place and it's able to take advantage of those indexes and retrieve the data in an ordered fashion, awesome, we're winning. And so you've got that ability to, to bring out ordered data and then it does two streams of information to spit that stuff out and it works extremely well. Now this works really well with small data sets, it works really well with mid-sized data sets, and it works really well with large data sets as long as the data is ordered. As soon as you're dealing with unordered data, you have to put a sort operator in there to get the data in order, and that adds possibly massive overhead to the query. So there's nothing magical about a merge join, it's just if we've got the data in order, cool, we win. And then adaptive joins are extremely efficient because it's picking and choosing based on the rows, whether it does a loops or a hash join. Now, just remember, it's not as efficient as a loops join. It's not as efficient as a hash join, given the appropriate data sets. But if you've got variable data such that, well, sometimes a loops would be better and sometimes a hash would be better, then adaptive join is extremely efficient because it avoids giving you loops when a hash would be better or hashes when a loop would be better. You get the right join criteria for the right data set, which makes it extremely efficient. Hopefully, this answers the questions, what kind of joins do we have? They are nested loops, hash match, merge join, and adaptive join, and which ones should be used generally in a given situation. Just remember, none of these joins is good, none of these joins is bad, each of these joins has a purpose and is used for that purpose by the optimizer based on your query, based on your indexes, based on your statistics. So if you're not happy with a join type, change the query, change the statistics, change the indexes, change the constraints. That will arrive at a better place than trying to force the execution plan to pick a particular join type. Thanks a lot. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.